I am so excited. Like I am always on these interviews. We have Deborah from Sacramento, California on. Deborah's story is crazy inspiring if you ask me. She is 68 years young, being a part-time signing agent, doing $2,000 a month. Congratulations, Deborah, on your success. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, let's just jump right in. You know, you know what I think is really inspiring about your story is that, you know, there's a lot of students or would-be students who email me who are in their 60s and they say, Mark, this is a young person's game. Mark, I'm 67 years old. There's no way that I can go out and be a signing agent. So I would love to inspire some 60-somethings today of what's possible. I think why you're a signing agent is super awesome. I just think everything about you is amazing, Deb. So are you ready okay. to inspire? I am. All right. Let's go. All right, all right. Let's go is right. Okay, cool. So let me just start with a simple question, Deb. How come you chose to become a loan signing agent? Um, yeah, well, I'll go back to December of 17. In December of 2017, we discovered that I had a brain tumor. So mm -hmm. I had to have surgery just before Christmas that year and have a tumor removed. It was a very serious surgery. My background up to then work-wise had been working in the accounting field. I am an enrolled agent, a bookkeeper. I have a degree in accounting. I didn't want to go back to 60 hours a week worth of work after that surgery. So I stopped. A friend had told me that was in the marketing field about becoming a signing agent. And so I got my notary. About six months after the surgery, I did my notary exam. I, while I was waiting for background, I turned, I did my signing agent classes. And then I kind of sat on it for a year to tell you the truth. Um, just waiting for things to happen. So then once I did get going on it, I went to the NNA convention and I met you. And sitting in a bar having drinks with a bunch of other people telling me how marvelous you were, I came home and I did my research and I joined the LSS family. And that got me off. A month later, I started doing my first signings. So that's how I got into this. And I do it. I do it on my terms because I've listened to you and many of your cast on Thursdays and I do everything on my terms now. So, and this, this industry doing this job lets me do that. Okay. So there's so much amazing stuff in there. First off, I'm so happy that our paths crossed that day because I now this led to this moment of this, this crazy inspiring story. So let's talk about like, well, there's a few things I think is really inspiring. It's a, that you had brain surgery, right that is like insanely intense but you still didn't choose to let brain surgery kind of derail you from what you wanted to do and i think that's inspiring within itself well thank you um you know there's you can sit back and let life just pass you by or you can get on the train and go with it and that's what i do is um i had a good doctor i had a wonderful daughter taking care of me and my hairdresser took care of all the rest so <laughs> i was able to pick up and keep going and that's that's what I do. Um, I like people. I like being with people. And I live in a 55 and older community. And everybody here is a senior citizen. And we have a ball together. And that's what I do. I just keep doing what I have to to keep that lifestyle going for me. I love and it. Positive thinking is a big part of that. I think that part of the story alone is in crazy inspirational. And I love how you don't let your circumstances define you. Like you said, to use your analogy, you got to keep on that train and keep going. So I think it's really cool part of the story and I'm inspired by it. And so, you know, what I also want to touch base on is the fact that you decided at that point, I'm not gonna work 60 hours a week. It sounds like you were working. So if you're 68 now, you were working 60 hours a week up to what, 66, 65? No, uh, yeah, about 66. Okay, so 66. So you're going just completely to the wall, 60 hours a week. And then you're like, look, this crazy event happened and I need to make some lifestyle changes. And so, you know, th at that point, you decided that I need to do something more on my terms. So, you know, when I when I asked you to go on and share this, I said, you know, you know, are, are you doing this in your retirement because you need the money? Or what is the, why are you doing this signing agent when you're 68? Can we talk through that? Because I think it's really cool. Sure. Um, one, I need people, I need people contact. And this is a way to get that people contact. Also, 
I don't need the money to put a roof over my head or food on the table, but I do have a lifestyle that I like to do a lot of extra stuff. And this lets me do that. And I, I also have a 99 year old mother that lives with me. <laughs> and this allows me, this job allows me to do some extra things for her too. So that's why I do it. It's for getting the little extras in my life, but also to have people contact. I love it. Now, I, I think you kind of said to me over the phone is like, you know, it's a user to lose it. And, and you yeah. know, you refuse to be, you know, to, to roll into your seventies without still being sharp. And this kind of allows you to kind of stay on top of your game. And to use your phrase from yesterday, it's like, Mark, I wanted to keep my mind sharp. I wanted to keep, I wanted to do something that <laughs> helped me kind of like stay young for lack of a better word. Um, it does. It does. Cause when you're out meeting people, I'm meeting people from all phases and in all ages of life when I'm doing loan signings. And I mean, I love talking with the young people and almost always I will look to see what they do for a living. And then I'll talk to them about getting into this industry if that works for them. <laughs> so I, I'm out there recruiting all the time too, because I love to help other people see what they can do with their life that's different. I love it. And so, I mean, like I said, I think it's, because I, we have some students, as you know, who need to the ret extra retirement income where you don't necessarily need it per se. Obviously we all could use the extra money, but it's almost more of a way to, like you said, a keep up your lifestyle, but B and I think almost as important is just kind of keeping you out there and sharp. It's like, look, you're, you enjoy the retirement life, but you kind of need something that kind of keeps you going. And like you said, you're talking to young people, talking all walks of life. And I think that's like one of the best parts of being a signing agent <laughs> is the fact that we meet everybody and I've never thought about being a signing agent to like keep your mind sharp and keep quick witted or whatnot. And it's cool. Oh, definitely. And when I get the forms and I look at the forms and I see a new form in there, I get the stimulation to learn something new every time I see a new form um, or working with a new company that I've never worked with that their forms might look a little bit different, but say, Oh yeah, I know what this form is. It's just a different format. So there's a lot to be said for, keeping yourself young by doing something and that's what this this business allows me to do is stay young i love it no deborah thank you so much i hope you're inspiring some 60 somethings that you know like this business is great for you so let's speak to a 60 something right now if i was going to ask you you know what would you say to a 68 year old who emails me and says mark this business isn't for me it's a young person's game well address that topic of this isn't for me it's a young person's game Right now. Okay. So this is what I'd say to them. Excuse me for that. Okay. Um, I actually met with a lady last week from North Carolina. She was here. We did the signing for her here. Her husband was going to be then back there. She used to be a notary. She used to work in the legal field as a legal secretary. So we talked about what I do and how often I do it and that I work on my own terms that and, and she took all the information. Um, I wrote down your YouTube for her to go look at. And this is a job that really can help you out in so many ways. Because like we talked about, it keeps, it keeps my mind going. Um, it gives you that extra money. If you have grant, in her case, she comes out here and stays in the summertime with her grandchildren. And she, the extra money would allow her to do that. Well, I mean, let's talk about specifically, like, you know, let's talk about some people who may be watching saying like, oh, look, I get why being a signing agent is great, but I'm still nervous that I'm 65 years old and it's young. So what I'm, what I, what I'm trying to get is your experience of being a 60 something. And like, do you feel like this is a perfect job for someone in their sixties? And, and, and do you feel any age discrimination? I mean, talk through that. Cause there's people that think like, I'm, I'm too old for this. So no one's ever going to use me cause I'm 68. No. Um, so never do I feel discriminated against. I went to the conference, everybody in my Northern California group up here that we know that I network with are all at least 20 years or more younger than I am. I feel perfectly comfortable interacting with them. The, uh, getting out and doing things, you have transferable skills from your, your younger jobs. Mm -hmm. So anything I did in my younger years is really a transferable skill mm -hmm. into this industry. And I can say, oh, I remember the first time I did a tax return. I was scared to death. Mm -hmm. That was somebody's tax return. Well, now I'm doing someone's loan. And yes, the first time was very scary for me. But you know what? 
you walk in, you have the confidence, you do what you can do, and you have always have a phone number there that you can call and get advice if you need to during the signing. Love it. So you're doing the right thing for the signer, and you're learning in the process. And it's never, it's never going to keep me from doing it. And I hope it doesn't keep anyone else, no matter what their age, from doing it. Because we all have the ability to read those documents and learn. And then that's what I try to say. And thank you for saying that. Because I think that, you know, this is one of the awesome businesses where like you're literally only judged on the work you do. Are you not missing signatures? Are you giving a good customer experience? It's one of those really cool industries where, you know, you can get hired via text message and then your work then will determine whether they call you again. So they'll give almost anybody a shot. <laughs> and then it's your job to execute great. And then if you actually execute the business comes back over and over and age has nothing to do with it. Ethnicity has nothing to do with it. I mean, you know, we have students that are 20 years old and six, we have our oldest as Alice's member is 80, a five, mm -hmm. 84. Um, so, I mean, it's all in between. I just love hearing it. Let's talk about something else that may be an elephant in the room for a 60 something or even 70 something is, you know, do you ever feel uncomfortable when going to a borrower's house that you are 68 and you're a female that's, you know, let's talk to someone who may be looking at the same mark. I'm 60, I'm 70. You know, I can't see myself going into a borrower's house. I can tell them all day. There's nothing to worry about, but let's have it here from you. So there are times when I get to a, a location and I am a little iffy about, do I want to go in there? But you know what? I made a commitment to go in and do that signing, and I have to do that. That's just me. I make a commitment. Well, let's I... talk about it. Okay, let's talk about that. I appreciate the honesty. So you feel iffy before you go in, but then you go in and what? Well, first of all, before I go in, I text someone the address of where I am. Right. So That's if they don't get back from me within an hour, then they, they right. should become concerned. Right. So that way, I feel I have a backup and protection. Perfect. And I can tell you, every time I have felt that way and got into the house, I have had a wonderful signing and really enjoy being with the people. And then that's what I was trying to say. And that's what I was going oh, go on. They might be a little bit eccentric, but you know what? That's good. Being different is good. <laughs> so that's not a problem. So I go in there and I just do the best I can for them. I'm there for them. And that, and once I am in the door, I have no problem whatsoever. To say is like look of course no matter who we are as humans we're going to feel a little bit and it's a new it's a new space it's a new place it's not our comfort zone but that's mm -hmm. what i was trying to get out of you is like look you may feel a little uncomfortable going in but you've never left an appointment saying oh my never. gosh i ran out of the appointment because it was too scary in there or there i was 68 and i felt unsafe like you've never that's never happened once you got into the appointment never never ever once i've gotten into an appointment and i've sat on a floor mm -hmm. and used a, a magazine for my table um, I, I do all sorts of whatever it takes to do the job and and get done what the client needs done well, I appreciate you saying signing. that because I can tell a lot of signing agents think like well, when I say you know 60 somethings or 70 somethings like I'm gonna be uncomfortable going into someone's house and it's natural before you walk into anything new that you have a little bit of apprehension but once you walk in I mean I've done tens of thousands of closings I've met the eccentric people I've had the moment of like Okay, the house is a little bit suspect, but I've never walked out of an appointment saying, wow, that was scary. I felt threatened or I felt like uh, mm -hmm. something was going to harm me. And I think some 60 somethings think that because they're going into, quote unquote, a stranger's house, that they're going to feel uncomfortable when they're inside. And you're saying that's never happened. No. Once I'm in the door, I'm fine. And actually, before I go in the door, I'm fine because I've sent that text and mm -hmm. I know I got my backup person that's going to be watching for me in an hour. I so I'm like fine going in there. Um, you know, I most of the areas I go to because I do this on my terms. I don't, you know, I'm not full time. I'm not even part time. I'm when I want to do it, I do it. I've built my relationships with certain signing companies and um, some escrow officers. But a lot of where I go is rural. This morning, I traveled 40 minutes into a rural area to do a signing. And I never know what I'm going to get there. I've walked into some houses that are absolutely fabulous. And I've also done a signing on the front of a pickup truck, too. So you're going to get all sorts of circumstances. But, but you've never I felt like you've never in, in the actual signing, you've never felt uncomfortable. You never felt like my, I was my, my safety has been in jeopardy. I've never. Yeah. In, in your, OK, good. And 
Sometimes I'm with senior people that some of the senior people are younger than I am, but they're struggling a little bit more with the whole mm -hmm. process. And I'm in digging in their file cabinets with them, helping to find loan papers and stuff for their applications, whatever. Yeah, yeah. you are like so awesome. Like honestly, you are so, so rad. I love this interview. So yeah. let's talk about a little bit so we can inspire a 60 something or any signing agent right now. Let's just age is no longer a number in the conversation from here on out. So let's just talk about how often you are working. So what is your, so you're making $2,000 a month basically because you want to. Um, mm -hmm. Is it a safe comment to say if you truly wanted to, you can make more than $2,000 a month? Yes, definitely. I definitely could. I have some connections with an escrow office that actually you and I talked about it yesterday and I'm stepping out and we're meeting tomorrow night for cocktails and probably dinner with someone that's a manager of an escrow office. And um, I've been holding a packet for a year from her to- well, I, think, I, think, I think this is awesome because you know, you're literally leaving money on the table, but that's because by choice. Exactly. And so it's like, I'm able to pick and choose. And I think that's what's great for anybody, not relative if the retirement or not. You know, right. you're able to work when you want to work and make the $2,000 a month and continue the lifestyles you want to do. And so you're part-time, like you said, you're not even part-time, you're at my time. <laughs> yeah, at my time, exactly. exactly. <laughs> that's like the best thing I've ever heard in my time. Um, so, you know, what I also want to touch base on to kind of speak into the part-timers, you know, because, <laughs> you know, some people, I've been trying to do a lot more part-time interviews uh, than the full-time signing agents like Laura, you know, so speaking to a part-timer, I mean, you know, let's ask you a question. Do you think someone building a part-time business, like there's business out there for them? Yes, there definitely is. And I've explained to them, you look at any house and any of one of five things can be going. You can be buying, you could be selling, refinancing, doing a reverse mortgage, taking out a line of credit. All, every house is possibly doing that. And there's more than enough business for all of us. The right. other thing, too, is I tell people that you can work this at your time. Just you know, look at the, the cycles of the business. I know the end of the month is going to be more busy than the first half of the month. And, and so I kind of judge my social calendar, really, around doing that. And so, oh, come the 20th, I haven't done as much as I'd like to financially. I might have to give up going to play cards or something or playing bocce because I need to pick up a little bit more business. I think it's uh, important to know that I run my life kind of on a rule of three. I know I can only do three good things at a time. So when it comes to this business, I know there's three signing services that I've built the relationship with and I keep that relationship going. Well, let's talk about time. that. Let's talk about that. Let's try to give some nuggets here, right? So I love trying yeah. to give nuggets. So, you have three relationships going with three signing services who feed you on the regular, right? Which right. just for clarification, which means before they send out a cattle call to all the other notaries are calling you first or asking you first, are you available? Is that right? Yes. Okay, cool. So speaking of which, let's try to give some nuggets here. You know, what are some, what are some keys you have found to help you create those relationships with those signing services that we can help a new signing agent watching right now? Okay, I had someone contact me to do a signing this last weekend that I've never worked for before. I did the signing. The At the last minute, the borrower switched the times. I accommodated that because it was a new service that I was working with. Um, let them know, communicated everything, met the borrower, came back. I followed up yesterday wanting to know, did you get everything? It should have been there by 10 o'clock today. Did you get everything? Um, talked about how much I liked talking with their client that who was the signer and that I would be happy to do more work for you in the future. And she came back with a very nice email that she will definitely be keeping me to use me in the future. It's that wow. I think they, I hope people just wrote that nugget down because that's probably one of the most powerful things we've been to, I, I've got out of a student in these is you know the follow-up to the signing is huge. So mm -hmm. um, I would say that is probably the tip of the day by Deborah because the follow up the next day via conversation is huge. And obviously it's some of the stuff I teach in the loan signing system. Um, but yes, I think that is an amazing nugget you just gave right there. Deb, I hope people took notes on that. Um, you know, let, let's talk about something. So you've been a loan signing system for a student for a year. Is that correct? And yeah. so looking back on your journey when you first started, you know, now that you're a year in, you're making 2000 bucks a month like clockwork. 
what was something you were nervous about then, then a year later, you're like, wow, I should not have been nervous about that at all. Uh, walking in to that very first signing and making sure that I got everything done absolutely perfect. That scared me that there's a lot of paper there and making sure I made sure everything was taken care of. And I actually did like an hour and a half prep and put a sticky on every single place that was supposed to be signed by me or the borrowers. And um, learning to trust myself, that was the biggest thing. Trust the knowledge that I had gained. I had listened, I did NNA, I had listened to you. I did a lot of practice and it just, I had to go in and do, you have to get past that first one. It's, a, it's never gonna be easy. You just gotta get past that first one. I love that, it. I think what's yeah. really cool you just said, and I don't think said it enough actually, is you just got to trust yourself, which is what you yeah. said. And I think that is like the quote of the day. You got to trust the training you took, whether that's the NNA or the loan signing system, but you've taken, you've invested into the training and you now at that point, you just got to trust what you've done before is going to get you through this moment now. And I think that is a great piece of advice to, to new signing agents is like, look, you are super nervous um, going in your first signing. But after you've done a few signings, you realize that it literally just was your, what your training was. Exactly. The other two is after you do a, a, like 10 signings, go back and do your training again. It's going to go. You're going to go. Oh, wow. I hadn't realized that. That made that much simpler the next time I went out. So continuing to do the same training over and over again is not necessarily a bad thing. It's no, just it's the best work. thing. And I love you talked about it because repetition is the mother of learning. It is. So one more time. Repetition is the mother of learning. And sometimes reinforcement is all it takes for something to really sink in. So I love that piece of advice because a lot of LSS students run through the certification never to open up the course again but oh, no. the reinforcement of the principles that you learn in my course i think that's a huge piece of advice and you know speaking to hopefully some lss students watching this as well that you know reinforcement of your training just makes you a better signing agent because it's impossible to, to remember every single thing of the certification or the training so i love that trusting your just trusting your training trusting yourself more importantly right but in all the time you're going to be fine, right? You are. You are. And the more you do it, the more you learn. You know, I know when I hand off that application for them to sign, I will tell you, the very first mess up I made is I didn't have them sign the top of the application on the first page. I never miss that anymore. And just remember, <laughs> you make an error, you'll never make it again. because That's it's right. That's right. <laughs> Experience is the best teacher any of us have and like you said at some point you got to trust your training take a dive in the deep end and build this business you know i want to kind of end on this it's been like amazing and thank you i think you've inspired i mean young signing agents who are looking to go part-time like look you built a business when you want to work as you want to work it you're getting relations with escrow officers with signing services you're getting business from all these different avenues i think you're doing it part-time it's super inspiring but what I really want to ask, you know, is, is a 60, we can swing it back to anybody, not just a 60 something, but you came from an accounting background. You did not come from a mortgage background. You did not come from a real estate agent background. So if someone's watching this video is saying, you know, Deborah, can I do this? You know, what would you say to someone saying, I, I don't have any mortgage background, you know, kind of inspire somebody from the fact that you've had no experience as, as a mortgage professional. But like you said, a lot of your earlier work has definitely influenced where you are. But specifically, there was no mortgage work in that background. So, you know, what would you say to somebody who's like, I have no mortgage background and, and you know, is this business for me? I think this business is for anyone because if you can read the documents, you're going to learn what those documents are and you'll be able to give the one or two lines to the borrower if you're handing them across. You're going to show the confidence that you have, that you have done your due diligence to know what you're giving to that borrower. So that anybody can step up and read. It might take someone three minutes to read the document, it might take someone 10 minutes to read it, but you're gonna read it and you're gonna absorb. That's the best thing you can do is just learn what you've got to give to the borrower. You sit and have a conversation with me about whether or not you can do it. It's as simple as that talking to a borrower.
It's just being able to communicate with people. Uh And people skills are just the most important thing you have for any job. So if you can give your people skills to people, that's going to that's going to win it all i don't know if that makes sense people skills to people. <laughs> well i think we all have people skills right? i mean i mean i think i think some people sell their people skills short but in my opinion if you have a friend you have people right. skills right so it's just kind of utilizing people skills so what you're saying and what i'm hearing i guess is you know the skill set of being a more um, a signing agent can be taught if you're willing to learn it reading right. and then just kind of trusting what you said again trusting yourself your inherent people skills come out when you're sitting with somebody so anyone can learn this business you know let's kind of end with this never once again this has been so awesome i love how you know you know you had a health scare you didn't allow that health scare to define you you understood that you got to stay sharp and wit and, and quick-witted the way you're going to do this by building a signing agent business that has two thousand dollars a month i mean all that is just incredible you know so you know our, our kind of our parting topic on the way out is you know i want to kind of wrap this back to the 60 something says, as you know, I'm all about trying to help as many people as I possibly can. And I really believe, and I, th- I, I think you know this from the group itself, is I believe the biggest segment missing from our family is the 60 somethings. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because of the emails I get is like, I'm just too old for this job. And, and I'd say you're not too old for this job. Like it makes me literally sad. Like I, I, I know you can help your family if you just kind of trust what I'm saying, but sometimes I'm 42 and coming from a 42 year old, they think I'm just trying to sell them a course. So on, on our parting, our parting topic, you know, let's just speak to a 60 something, you know, who's in Arizona or Florida or, or Idaho, you know, watching this webinar, I mean, this interview right now, I mean, what would you say to that 60 something contemplating becoming a signing agent and they just need some words of inspiration from you to say, let's just do it. Right. I would tell them, you know, I've sat here and talked with you for the last 45 minutes while we did this paperwork, and you certainly have the ability to do this job. And you have a support system that will be behind you 100%. You're not alone out there at any any point in time. Um, I'll give you phone numbers. You have my phone number because we just confirmed this appointment today. You can call me at any time. Think about what what it is you want to do if you have some extra money. And give me a call and I'll help you get to where you need to go. And I can get you in contact with all the best people that will help you through this business. And Uh you'll be very confident. I'd say after 10 signings, you'll be with it. That's the loan signing system way. Abundance. There's there's some for all of us. I love how you literally offer to help another 60 something get off the ground. That is what we do in LSS. We try to help each other because the rising tide lifts all ships. And there's, we're not each other's competition. We're all colleagues. There's business for all of us. So I'm going to put this on YouTube. If you want to create a YouTube channel or, or, or a login, I'm sure there'll be comments on here, Deborah. If I had to guess, there are going to be comments saying, Deborah, I'll take you up on some of that support. So uh, Deborah, thank you for speaking for all the 60 somethings. You are, you are an amazing spirit. You're just an amazing energy. Uh, I, the good you're putting out in the world is going to come back tenfold. And I know there's going to be some people who are watching this who will take you up on your offer of helping them through this, even though, uh, they may think they're too old because there's no such thing as being a loan signing agent. There isn't. But I want to say one thing in closing, Mark. You're the inspiration for all of us. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Deborah. I cannot wait to see you next week at a regional event. Until yep. then, uh, honored and just humbled that you've chosen to uh, be part of the family. So, Deb, until next time, thank you so, so much. Bye. Bye.